Hey everyone, welcome to HTML Energy. My name is Laurel. So today I have a pretty special recorded conversation to share with you. This is a conversation I had with musician and video creator Bill Wirtz. Bill has prolifically created songs and videos now for many years. And some of his videos have gone quite viral. Uh, for instance, his video titled History of the Entire World, I Guess, currently has over 100 million views on YouTube. So about a year and a half ago in April 2019, I invited Bill to my class at Yale called Interactive Design. So you'll soon hear a recorded conversation from my classroom where we talk about Bill's work and approach. Uh, but we specifically keep coming back to Bill's website, which is located at www.billwertz.com. And Wertz is spelled W-U-R-T-Z. All right, hope you enjoy it. Um, yeah, thanks for coming here. Thank you um, for having me. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so maybe just to give some context again, this is, it's like a, a class that's called inter Interactive Design in the Internet. So we've been learning some basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, <laughs> but, um, but also thinking about what it means to publish online yeah. um, as like an individual creator. And so... Um, uh, we just took a little look at your website and everything and was just maybe thinking you could tell us more about your website and why you created it. Yeah. It's it's kind of like escaping from prison, honestly. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's this dream that I used to have a lot, which is like a flying dream, but it's not like a good flying dream. It's like, and I keep having this dream, but it's like, you know you can't fly, but you realize that if you just jump pretty high and kind of just push down really hard, you can kind of get a little bit off the ground. And then it's the realization that if I'm just patient and I just do that a bunch of times, you can get as high as you want. So I've had that dream a lot of times. So what does that relate? What's, what's the point of that? It's like escaping from, from jail. Like, and, and like you think you can't get out of jail, but then all of a sudden you realize... you actually could if you just take one like piece of the wall out at a time you can you can do it <laughs> does that make any sense yeah <laughs> um, I, the thing is is that like you know I grew up in the you know the digital age or just going into the you know the internet started like when I was a kid and I was you know there was always a general idea that that was going to be really helpful because, like, traditionally, if you want to be an actor or a musician or a singer or anything like that, traditionally there's this idea that you have to go to LA and you have to get noticed by the right people. And maybe I would have had the stomach to do that if I was living in 1950 or something, but I just got the feeling that the internet was going to be a, a nice way to sort of circumvent all that. So, yeah, I kind of always knew that I was going to be able to somehow do that. Yeah. And about when was it that you started your website? Or like well, I actually didn't start the website until 2014, mm. uh, which may seem weird because the website has stuff on it that was done as far back as 2002. But I, I'm a very, very hesitant, patient person. I think... When I was born, this might seem irrelevant, but I was super late being born, but also super quick. <laughs> and I've realized that that's kind of, that pattern is everywhere in my life. When I have to wake up to go somewhere, I'll stay in bed, stay in bed, stay in bed, stay in bed. All of a sudden, like, you know, 
I'm gone. Like, I'm out the door. Like, I'm just like, out the door. So that's pretty much a lot of things I do that way, it seems like. And I didn't wait, but I just am very, very careful putting all the pieces together, writing, you know, a bazillion different things, you know, writing song, you know, play, playing, developing years and decades worth of musical experience and all that stuff. So it wasn't until 2014 that I actually got the website and then started filling it with everything I had. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and it seems like you've kept very careful track of when you made everything. Yeah. Yeah. Is that important to you? Yeah. I think it is, yeah. I don't know. It, it seems like everything in this world is going through time and is experiencing time. So if you look at music, if you look at movies, and you look at when it's made, you always know when it's made, and it just kind of it, it tells its own story. Real, reality tells its, its own story, like, again and again and again, just through time. So, yeah, I think it's really important to know, mm -hmm. to know when stuff happened. And that reminds me about your, your personal schedule. Um, could you tell us? Oh, right now it's in shambles. I'm being dragged along, <laughs> dragged along by a rope. You know, it's gone through. You know, I mean, when you do everything yourself, it can take a long time. Especially because the main stuff that I generally do is fully audiovisual content. You, you know, songs, videos, videos with songs or songs. With it, it, there's a lot of pieces put together if you do it by yourself. So if you're also a raging perfectionist, you know, put all that together and it just takes forever to get anything done. So you're always fighting against that. So I've, I've always been just kicking myself, trying to make this happen faster. And I've, I had a big breakthrough last fall, and I essentially went to like 4x speed. Um, that was my best time before I suddenly just had a crisis and just, and just went to two weeks per music video. Um, and I did that seven times in a row. And then I got greedy because I wanted to put the non-songs back in. So then I said, but I don't want to interrupt the two weeks, so I got greedy. So I tried to do a non-song on the opposite Tuesday, and then two, and I never succeeded. And as a result, the whole thing came crashing down. I've been, I've been being dragged along ever since, kind of averaging maybe one every three weeks, which is still way better than before, but I'm, I'm, I don't have a schedule. I'm suffering right now as far as schedule. Mm -hmm. The target is one week. I'm going for that one week where I can get full music video done in one week. My grand record of all time is probably 11 days. So I'm still going to have to make some innovations to, to make that possible. But that's where we're at. I, I've heard you say, like, the schedule is life or death because you, you describe yourself as, like, a perfectionist. So it, like, kind of allows you to uh, yeah. bow yourself or yeah. something? Yeah. Yeah, well, the thing is, if you're working off schedule and there's no, there's, and you're just doing what you want when you want to do it, it's just, the project will just eat itself alive. You know what I mean? And also, I get a real kick out of watching, like, behind the scenes TV production things. Like, there's a whole behind the scenes Seinfeld thing. I've barely even seen the show Seinfeld, but I've watched more of the behind the scenes. And it's just, it just, it just shakes me to the core in the best way because I'm reading, I'm, you know, watching interviews with Jerry Seinfeld and Larry talking about how they do the rewrite of the script and then literally run down the hall because there's no time. you got to do, and you got to, yeah, so, yeah, speed, there's, speed has its thrills because mm -hmm. it gets you to do, um, it gets you to make crazy decisions and take crazy risks. The other one is behind the scenes South Park and I've not hardly seen any South Park but they do their own show and they do the show in a week. Simpsons somehow spends eight months on every episode. I don't know how that works out. Family Guy does that too. But South Park does it in a week. And it's crazy. And they think that the world is going to end every single time. And they're stressed because they can't, they can't, you know. And, and right before it's about to be released, you know, Trey Parker is like nearly suicidal because he thinks the thing sucks so much. He's like, this is the worst thing I've ever done. But it's not. It's perfectly good. You know, and then you know, and then and then he's over it, and then it goes on TV, and everyone likes it. It's cool. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you would have. And they also said, "This is what kills me." They also said they've tried it, where they work over the summer on a couple of episodes to try to get it better, and they say those ones always are the worst ones. Mm -hmm. well, that's funny. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, like you comparing your song and video making to shows because mm -hmm. you're just like kind of like a one-man band, I would say. Mm -hmm. But, like, these have, like, multiple people working on them. Mm -hmm. So, to me, it, it kind of feels like you almost have to pretend to be multiple people. Oh, yeah. In a way. At least 10 to 20 different roles. <laughs> <laughs> it's really stupid, honestly. I should really learn to get along with other people. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is that a real wish? or? Is, yeah, or, sort of. Sort but of. I, it never worked. Oh. I used to be scared because they used to, there's a lot of 
I call it collabo propaganda. When people tell you that you're supposed to collaborate and you have to collaborate, and they say, look at Lennon McCartney, look at this and that. You know, when I was younger, you know, I assumed that you had to collaborate because everyone always says you're supposed to. And so I was stressed out about that because I, who, 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 you know, how's that going to work? You know, no one's going to get like what I'm trying to do, um, and I don't like what they're trying to do. And then one day I saw an interview with someone. Uh, it was actually James Taylor, singer-songwriter. I still can't find this clip. I need to find this clip. I know it exists because I saw it, I think. But, but they said, uh, <laughs> I'm not so sure anymore. Now. When I search for it now, I, I see myself because I've, I've used this anecdote before. So that's what you get when you Google that. But, it's, uh, but it was like, do you collaborate? And he says, you know, I don't really collaborate well. Um, and that's one of the things I like about songwriting and what I do because it really is something you can do all by yourself. And like... Because I had been secretly wishing that that was legit forever, and I was just, you know, I was too scared because society kind of frowns upon that kind of. But no, some people can do it themselves, and it has it has its pros and cons. But having complete control over the whole thing, you can do crazy things. Mm -hmm. You can write scripts that you would never be able to pitch to anyone. Um, yeah, that reminds me of when you, I was going through your questions page, and you said something like. Um, it's easy to forget that you have creative freedom, like in a situation, mm -hmm. as long as like, you're not working for anyone else. Yeah. Um, I, I find that line really like mm -hmm. valuable when I'm working alone um, yeah. to remember. Sometimes I feel like I can only think clearly when I feel like I'm breaking some ridiculous rule. Mm. I mean, one of the first videos, one of the earliest videos that it was a ramble, but it got edited and made it onto the site. One of the earliest things. I'm walking around with the camera in the room just trying to figure out what the hell to do with my life. And I just look at the keyboard and I just, oh no, I flip the chair over upside down. I just put it in the middle of the room, upside down chair. And then, and then I do it, and I flip the keyboard upside down. I put the keyboard, the piano keyboard, upside down. And then I took the keyboard stand and I put it on top. So that, that kind of thing is the only, <laughs> I feel like that's the only way I can ever start thinking clearly. Because mm -hmm. when I just take the whole thing and just, and just break it, break mm -hmm. the game. That's the only then I start having fun. That's the only way I can like get yeah, started. Yeah. That reminds me, we listened to your one second song called Bears <laughs> <laughs> before this. That was actually part of another strategy which comes into play. And I always suggest this when people say, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to write this, I want to write songs, write movies, da, 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 da. there's too many moving parts. Yeah, it's too many moving parts. You have to, this is, and I've never really heard this strategy from anyone else, but it worked, it really works. It really worked for me. Start with insanely short things. And I've used that strategy in many ways. The Bears was actually the second. The first one I did was called Die. It just goes, Die. And so all you need, I mean, like, but it's, it's you know, a fully recorded thing. So it's got, you know, what do you need? Kick drum, a cymbal, the vocal, the chord, the bass note. The video has one word, you know. And it's, but it's like you get to zip through all those different things that you got to do. And, and you learn about the process because you get to everything. Boom. All you got to do is like one note on this and then one thing on that. And like, boom, learning, instant learning. Mm -hmm. And then you gradually increase uh, the length from there. Bears was actually, I had to do that because I meant to start with one second and then go to two seconds. But on die, the crash symbol rang out for like two seconds. So, I did, so Bears was actually the one second. One second, yeah. I see. And then can you tell us a little bit about, we were on your reality page earlier and... Um, <laughs> You were like, oh, I want to start making like a really long video. Um, and when so, is, when is this from? Oh, I think this was 2016. Okay. But we're just wondering, like, those two videos, History of Japan and History of the Entire World, I guess, yeah. are like huge undertakings. Yeah. And so, could you tell us maybe first, like, how those evolved? But second, like, what does the research process? for a year-long project like look like, and how do you schedule that? I was really winging it, and I'm kind of amazed that the Japan one, Japan was first, kind of amazed that it worked out as well as it did, but it was because I'd been doing short ones for so long, and I was even, I got, see, I kind of accidentally, just when I was sick of doing short stuff, I accidentally got super viral on Vine, which is like the app that, like, and six seconds is the time limit there, mm -hmm. which is great, because, like, it loops, and I, I just, <laughs> short content works really well, but I was just getting insanely sick of doing short stuff and all of a sudden that was where the audience was so I had to do those like every day for like a long time but because I did all that it, it just 
refine my skills like so much. I mean, I started doing four part harmonies or three part harmonies on everything, just recording, producing the crazier graphics, everything. So then, by the time I finally lost my mind, I said, I'm doing a long history video. I don't care what anyone says. I was surprised at how well it worked, just because I had already had the procedure, you know. Like, mm -hmm. do you do the audio first? Do you do the video first? It's like a trillion questions. Mm -hmm. So I was really surprised at how smoothly that went, because before that, I never did anything longer than, geez, not even 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And somehow it just worked. And research is like, I don't know, just use the internet, I guess. I actually had a disclaimer at the beginning that was kind of like the South Park disclaimer, which is like, the information here is could be completely ridiculous, and I don't really know or care that much if it's true. But I just took that disclaimer out just for the hell of it. So, but I don't know. I just use the internet. I didn't really. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else to say about the research. Really. The second video was like yeah. 20 minutes long. And mm -hmm. that one never would have worked if I hadn't done the Japan. Oh, so you built yourself up. Yeah. And the thing with the history thing, and, and I already had huge, massive viewership on the Japan one. I mean, it was already at that point, it was already for 30 million, 20 million. So like, I knew, and everyone was asking me every single day of my life, when are you going to do another thing like history Japan, right? Most people were thinking linearly, like they were expecting I would do like another country or like the next country over. And I was like, no, you don't get it. So yeah, the idea was to make, because Japan was a huge surprise because everyone knew me from Vine and it was just super short and it was like completely, so I, I needed to do a nut, so like, yeah, the whole world. And I wasn't going to do it, I was going to do America. But then I just said, you know, life is short, just try the whole world. And I knew the pain that that was going to be. But you gotta try it, you know. You gotta mm -hmm. try doing telling the history of the entire world. You gotta just go for it. Mm -hmm. But it was brutal. Mm -hmm. I mean, the total time for Japan it was three months production time. For history of the world, it was I was kicking and screaming the whole way through eleven months, wow. um, just working as fast as I can, just panicking every single day that I was going to lose the entire audience if another day goes by with no with no releases. People asking me every single day, when are you going to make another history of the world? Are you afraid that you're going to lose your audience because you because you never because you're inactive? People mm -hmm. telling me I'm inactive every single day. Did you take a break after it? Not really. Not really. <laughs> you don't have ads on these videos, is that right? Well, the thing is, I there I have them now on YouTube. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm kind of playing the game with everyone else. The reason, uh, well, ads are a real drag and they really suck, especially when they're targeted and stuff. And the thing is that I remember like before there were ads on YouTube. Like, so I remember the first time there was ever an ad on YouTube, and it was like that feeling like, oh no, this is ruined now. So that feeling just carried over for a long time, because they, they give you the option to not have ads. So I just figured having ads on your videos on YouTube makes, really makes it a miserable uh, experience. So I held on to that for a long time, and then I turned on display ads. There's a logistical reasons why I did that. It doesn't cover the video. I used the one that's just a picture to the side. The reason, there's a technical reason for that. I'm probably, I don't know if this is getting too bad. There's a technical reason for that one. Because in order to get the red, YouTube red, which is now called YouTube premium income, you actually have to check the box that includes some type of ad. So I chose the one that was, so that's why I did that. Because I figured if I'm not even getting YouTube red income, then that's really silly. But now, sorry, this is total, <laughs> this is so boring. But like, as of recently, I actually turned on the five-second skippables. And the reason is, is because I found out finally, for sure, what everyone suspected, which is that if you don't have good monetization enabled, the YouTube algorithm will not be nice to your videos. Mm. Which makes perfect sense, because they, they need to make money. So, and I was able to prove it, because I had a video that was listed as uh, number two on trending. It was like right near the top of the trending list. When you click trending, there it is, number two. Uh, but when you go to a fresh browser, go to youtube.com front page, there's this line of five videos that says trending videos. And those videos are being picked from like the top ten-ish. And if you keep refreshing the page, they'll mix around, but it's all videos from the top ten. Mine was never showing up, mm. even though I knew it was number two on trending. Mm. So then I went into the settings, turned the five-second skippable ads on, hit refresh, boom, it was there. Mm. <laughs> so now I know... So now I'm five seconds skippables. Oh well, I'm making probably quite a bit more money now mm -hmm. from that anyway. So mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, that was a long boring story. I don't know. But you were you were really like for a while you were like very anti ads and they just suck. They just suck. I, I yeah. think. I mean some people I guess like ads and just watch ads on the page. I I thought most people don't like them. Mm -hmm. um, and it's especially ridiculous when it's like the same one over and over again. Yeah, they just suck. I don't know. Yeah.
I mean, going back to your personal website, which is a place that is ad-free. Oh, I see. Um, <laughs> yeah. I wonder if we could, like, talk a little bit about that. As someone who's been really curious about your work for a long time, I feel like it's super generous because not only do you have, like, the, like, MP4 videos yeah. just right there, but, like, you also kind of have, like, a trail through your whole process. Yeah. Ironically, nowadays, most people don't even know how to download a file from the Internet. So when I give all that stuff free, like, here's the file. There it is. Kaboom. Download. Most people don't even know that. They don't even know how to, like... So if they prefer YouTube, that's fine. Go ahead. You know, I make money from that. So that's okay. But I don't know why all websites are so bad. But, like, you look something up online, and, you see, and here's the thing that says, okay, this, is the, this has the information. You click on it. Maybe my computer just isn't good enough. But no website ever loads on my computer. But the, the, the Facebook share thing, those always load first, and then they jump around as the page like tries to reload, and then like an ad will load, and then it finally the content loads for like half a second, then it jumps, and then and then all of a sudden there's like a sign up box, sign up for this website that I've never heard of. So it's like, why are all I don't know why all websites are like that, but all websites are like that, yeah. and I think it's insane because I'm just looking for a piece of text. And if you just put a piece of text on a thing, it loads freaking instantly. And it's like, you know, and occasionally I'll, you'll stumble upon websites that are that were made in 1997, and they're just text, and they load so fast, and they're so friendly. It's just, bam, there's the thing. And it's like, I just, I can't even tell you the excitement that I get when I find one of those sites. So, of course, it's a no-brainer mm -hmm. to do that. I'm, I'm lucky it's still legal to do that. One, one day it's going to, like, not be legal to do that. Or something, or, or maybe the yeah. Yeah. And can you tell us a little bit about um, some of the maybe like weirder sections on your website? Like, for example, the reality page. Um, why hasn't it been updated in a couple <laughs> of years? Over and over and over again. Yeah, it's probably just because I'm a perfectionist and I want to. Thing is, the whole reason the reality page is ever anything good or interesting is because I can edit it with an iron fist. Mm -hmm. Most people don't don't realize I leave these recordings on. Like, for, I mean, the entire way here I had it on I mean it's like you know so it's like so yeah not only just the graphics that's actually the least part it's actually going through the stuff mm -hmm. and finding stuff that's good enough and piecing it together and trying to it's really thrilling and I always knew I could do it I just didn't even do the editing until four years after I had already been recording mm -hmm. so when people say it's funny because right after History Japan came out I went and built the reality page for the first time and I went through the last four years of audio things spent weeks going through, finding the bits, editing them together, then putting graphics on them and doing that. Finally, the thing came out, and there it is, and it has, and my stopping point, I decided, was going to be right before I started editing, if that makes sense. The mm -hmm. stopping point for the content release was actually going to be right before I started doing the producing, because otherwise you'd just get journals about journals, about journal editing, about journal editing, which, so ironically, like the day after I released it, people started saying, why don't you update that page anymore? Why did you stop doing that page? It's like, you don't get it. I just started. Yeah. Anyway, I still haven't figured out how to how to answer that. Yeah. No, that's a good answer. And maybe this leads me to another question, which is like, do you think documenting your work in such such a comprehensive way is generative for your process, or does it slow your production time? Well, it it might slow me down, but for some reason, it's just what I have to do. It's just the way I have to do it. To like get reason. ideas churning, or no, no? just oh. to. It, I don't know. It just makes me feel more comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, especially because it, it's kind of like you're escaping from a, from a deserted island. There's no one... <coughs> escaping from a deserted island is an awesome thing to do, by the way. And it, if you can You've succeed at doing that... Huh? You've done it? Well, I'm, that's kind of a metaphor okay. for like, escaping from the obscurity <laughs> of feeling like you should be a really successful and famous person and feeling like you're good enough to be that, but having no comprehension of how to even, like, interact with other people, basically. So, yeah, but, like, again, if you're, like, getting off of a, a deserted island, it's a pretty awesome thing to do, and you're going to want there to be a story about it. So, um, and it's also very difficult to do. So if you're going to do it, and if you think there's any chance that you might make it out, you kind of want to start documenting the whole thing, because by the time you get out, that's going to be super valuable. Mm. So that was kind of the general idea behind kind of just recording every move I make. Because I knew that one day it would, it would, it would pay off. 
mm. and I'd be able to like edit the hell out of it, which makes it even more fun. Mm. So, I don't know. Yeah, I, I feel like personally, I I would do a lot of stuff at the same time just because it keeps me like fresh or it, like makes mm-hmm. me not precious about any one thing. So mm-hmm. I, I figured that that w- that was part of the reason, but no. it seems okay. No, I actually don't like doing multiple projects at the same time because oh. once you're allowed to escape from one project, you just kind of escape from all of them. Mm. So there's pretty much, I've gotten myself over my head, you know, because I keep adding these sections, you know. I love to do anagrams all the time, so eventually I added a section on the site for that. So every time I add a new section, there's a new way for people to complain that I'm not, you know, like, why did you abandon that page? You just don't like it anymore? And it's like, oh, there's like 10, 20 different things. Like Twitter, I have like a million different things. You know, it's... That's whatever. It's my problem. <laughs> so the pages are kind of like little projects themselves. Yeah. Even though they have updates, it's like that you should people shouldn't expect that you're going to update them. All yeah, time. I just you know, it's getting it over my head. It's just really common for me. You know. Yeah. Cool. Maybe I'd open it up to all of you if if you have any questions for Bill. Um, I should have said this before. I was going to say questions yeah. you should ask them when you think of them. Cause yeah. I'm, yeah, but I forgot. I was. Oh yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was wondering because you have you post on your personal website, but you also post on a variety of social media platforms. What difference you see in those experiences and how you interact with your audience? Uh, yeah. Originally, I wanted it to be just a website. Well, actually, here's the thing I should say. When I was finally ready to explode. Like I've been doing all the songwriting and recording and all this stuff for years and years and years. Wasn't actually online yet. And I was like, okay, it's time to figure out a way to get online. I didn't think of making my own site. I actually went to Bandcamp first and then I went to I'm gonna try to do stuff with Reddit. I don't know how that would work. But then Tumblr, I was like, Tumblr's probably it. So I started trying to do that and, and but I ended up just trying to find the most minimalist theme I could and then I and, and like delete this, delete basically it was just to try to delete everything. But you can't delete everything. So I, it drove me crazy. So then I ended up editing the custom code because I wanted so badly to delete things that I didn't want. Mm-hmm. And after a few weeks of editing the custom code, I was like, wait a minute, I'm already editing the custom code. I mean, I don't even know anything about code. I was just copying and pasting stuff. And I was like, I'm already editing code. So like, why don't I just see what it takes to make a website? So then I figured it out on, just on the hard drive. You take a text file, put some stupid HTML, just put the things in list form. The expert page is the only page on the site. That was the first, that's the original website. And it was just lists, links with dates, and then I threw it into Safari, and I just, it was the greatest thing like, I've ever seen. It's like, this is exactly what I've always dreamed of. So, but, yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to mess with any of social media or even YouTube. But, but there's a lot of pressure for people, there's a lot of pressure to do that. And Twitter was Twitter was actually a kind of a promotional strategy, so I had to get into that. And yeah, social media things have huge advantages because they're actually they're connected with people, and you can't really get that on a website. Like, who the hell is going to find a website? So yeah, there's, there's ups and downs, you know. Mm-hmm. There's ups and downs, but yeah, the people can can't get likes on a website. <laughs> but that's actually I'm actually really really glad because the blissful ignorance that I experienced oh. <laughs> writing stuff for the questions page. You know, I can be like, yep, I know I did a good job there, and I can have no clue if it was a complete flop or if it was a complete... Because there's a thing, this human nature is a thing. Once you get... You might sit around with, like, you know, 30 views is, like, the most you've ever gotten, and then you get 60, and you're like, holy crap, that's... You just want 60. Then when you get 60, then you're going to commit suicide if you ever get 30 again. And then when you get to 5,000, you're going to kill yourself if you ever get 1,000. So that's the weird thing. So in a way, it's really good not to know. That makes me wonder if you keep numerical tallies on your um, questions, like how many questions you've answered. Because you do it very prolifically, right? Yeah, I, I don't keep track of the ones I've answered, but I can tell how many I got mm. during a certain period of time. Mm. So there's that. That's the only indication I have mm-hmm. of, how, of how it's going with Speaking of feedback, I was wondering, since you are like active on some social media, including YouTube, mm-hmm. some of the YouTube comments are just wild. <laughs> Do you read the comments no. below your videos? The day after, <laughs> his, maybe the couple days after History of Japan came out, I must have spent four hours just hitting refresh, and it's just constant comments. There's actually a reality video about that that expresses pretty much what this is like. 
And it's like people saying, yes, yes, wow, more, great, more. And then you get this freaking huge paragraph about how I'm everything that's wrong with the world. <laughs> and the thing is, I was only used to Vine, and there's like, Vine comments have to be really short, but on YouTube, they can be really long. Uh, so you get some really scary stuff on there. And I literally haven't looked at YouTube comments since then, since, since I decided to recover from that, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, people actually, when I tell people that on the questions page, they say, what, what's the problem? Most of them are really, really good. Um, but it's just too scary. It's too scary. So I, I haven't looked at comments um, in years. I'm wondering, as someone who also produces things kind of serially, mm -hmm. do you feel like when you're doing a project, have you, are you familiar enough at this point with the way you work to know which elements of a project are going to take the most time or to feel like you have some control over certain parts of what you do, like they're more static, and does that help you sort of know or anticipate how much time any particular project is going to take? I'm thinking like length of the video or... Yeah. What I'm working without a schedule is pretty much just torture the whole way through because I wish it was done, I wish it was done the day I started it. Um, so it'll, I'll just be kicking and screaming through the whole thing. But, yeah, I do have an idea. I mean, I've been doing music videos pretty much the same length, roughly, serially, for a while. So I do, and of course, now that I'm trying to do this Olympic crunch, I mean, those things took 10 weeks, 12 weeks, 8 weeks. Like, it was like, and I was trying to go as fast as I could. And I went about a year, just, they all took 10 to 12 weeks, and that was the best I could do. Until one day I was like, no, this is not acceptable. Two weeks or die trying is what I said. And I don't know how I did that, but I got it to two weeks. But um, what the hell is my point? Yeah, when dealing with that, I started to really start to get a sense of what of, of how long different things take. And now I'm trying to get it to one week. So now I'm just trying to, like, I'm literally, that's all I think about in terms of when I'm, when I'm in the, uh, what do you call it, the defeated stage, which is where I am right now, because I attempted, I attempted one week. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I got further than I'd ever gotten before. I got from Tuesday to start Tuesday to Friday on schedule with this insane where I cut everything in half. Like, but then failed. So, so then I get really defeated and I can't even lift a finger. But during that time, I'll constantly be trying to tweak the schedule around and try to. So yeah, I, I'm very aware of, of at least with that project, the music video thing. I'm, I'm very aware of which things take time. So it sounds like you said you were like recording yourself a lot of the day and you just ended up running, but you also seem to probably shouldn't admit that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, interested in text. So are you like writing stuff down or is it mostly yeah. like I used to do uh, many years ago when I really just wished I could make videos and wished I could record all the parts in the song myself and there, you know, when I wanted to do all these things, but it's a lot of stuff to come together to do all that and I couldn't yet. Uh, the, the word processor was my best friend. I discovered that I could just turn it on and just start going crazy. And it really helped. Um, and I saved all of it, and I'm still 100 times more than I've ever posted, but I am posting them. I'm actually doing one a day um, onto the, the notes page. So that's why there's stuff from 2005. But uh, what the hell am I trying to say? Yeah, text was my major outlet before I had the strength to really do all these audiovisual stuff. So, yeah, I think... Since about 2010 or 11, I started to switch over to audio recordings and video recordings. But I've, I've got both. But sometimes, yeah, it's, there's a little bit less text. Now, text is more used in a more practical way, like for actually songwriting. Or if I get a song idea somewhere, I'll be able to document it. Um, yeah, so it's still there. And every once in a while, uh, I go crazy for text. Sometimes when I'm writing tweets, I'll, I'll, use to, uh, I'll just go crazy just to try to get some tweets. Yeah. So something I think that resonates with me from your videos is sort of like their playfulness but insightfulness constantly. It's sort of like this thing where then I'm thinking about like, well, I have a lot of thoughts also, and then I think about like how I could phrase these things. And I'm wondering, like, do, do you kind of think thoughts throughout your day that are like phrased in the context of your aesthetic or like your sort of like process where it's like if I see like a cool color I'll be like you know interested in exploring more with it mm -hmm. or if I see like 
a funny situation, just like the absurdity of it kind of is going to, I'll, I'll try to translate that. So how is your like sort of life to... It's constantly? definitely, it's an overload, and it's always been an overload for many years. Like, you know, you just go through like, and I'm just like, eh. there's this feeling that you could make a full-length movie out of any moment. Like, so yeah, that's kind of torture. There's a lot of things that have to be done to make a video or a movie. There's a lot of moving parts to come together. So, yeah, it's definitely been an overload. And that's a big explanation for why I live life the way I do. I'm still catching up to that, you know. That's why I document everything. That's why I do it. Oh, man. You should see these, like, category sort things, project sort. There's, like, I just found some from five years ago, but they're all over the place where I try to try to get a handle on these infinite types of projects, each of which can e explode into infinite more types of projects. This is just what I've been going through for years. I love to see your desktop and how you are, or your your file structure. Yeah, there's certain things. There's there's certain <laughs> text files that are like golden text files that have actually lasted. There's one for songwriting. It's called Writing Tear, T A R E. I don't know why it's called that. It started in 2012. It was when I just decided to take all of the songs and partial songs and everything that I had in books, binders, and stuff, and just go and just list them chronologically. Um, and then, then I can go through and work on that. So that list has been going for like seven years. And it's still the list when I get a new song idea that goes into there. There's certain ones that, are, that have lasted, but there's other ones that I can't seem to get a handle on. Like I'll do, I'll do it, one of them's called Improv Wish List, which is uh, from improv recordings, ones that, I have thousands of hours of improvised recordings, by the way. Ones that I wish I could add, ones, ones that are to do. Anyway, it's, it's, it's a clusterfuck, it's insane. But, but there are certain ones that have, that have lasted, so that's good. Um, have you ever like recycled your previous ideas and then just like develop the photo? Just like, oh, I'm not gonna use like my previous ideas. I just want to like make something new, something like that. Uh, yeah, I think so. Wait, what do you mean recycle? Uh, as in like, oh, uh, as in like, oh, this idea I I've been like I've I've done it before or something like that. But like, I don't I don't want to like do it anymore, or something like that. Done it before, like released it. Or? Yeah, and then so I did something and then released it and then and then like when you were trying to like make something and then you felt like oh I I've, I've done it before and then oh you yeah said, yeah I try not to like repeat stuff that's already been released. It happens probably sometimes by accident, um, but if it hasn't been released, then I can use it. Sometimes what happens is it'll be like a older songs that didn't get finished or didn't get released. I ha since I've been doing a lot of songs recently, writing a lot of songs, I have caught myself lifting, you know, stealing bits and lines of previous songs that were never recorded and never finished. Which is bad news for the old older song because it means it creates a problem there. But that already had bad news because it wasn't able to get finished, you know. That, you know it's, it's kind of good news because that line was not going to see the light of day otherwise. So I've started doing that recently. So, so yeah, sometimes that happens. I was just wondering um, where you come from, and like, because uh, you we watched them on the St. Helens video, and mm -hmm. I was, it seems like you have a relationship with the mountain. No, I don't. So, that <laughs> happened really quick. <laughs> no, that happened really quick. Uh, it was a very fast relationship, actually. I was <laughs> taking the plane. I spoke at a at a conference, which went very badly, actually. But that's a separate story. But I was yeah on a plane to Portland, Oregon, and I was following the ground. I could see the, I was able to actually follow the, with no GPS, I actually kept track of the map the whole time. It was kind of fun. But anyway, all of a sudden, we get near the end of the flight, there's just like two, actually two huge, ridiculous, huge, like, mountain volcano things. And I'm like, well, that's, that's got to be a famous mountain, I'm sure. So, yeah, I got a chance to look it up, and one of them was Mount St. Helens. I'm like, yep, I've heard of that. And then I got to the hotel room, and there was a, uh, there was a picture, there was like a big portrait of Mount St. Helens is kind of like the Mount Fuji of, of Portland. I got that impression because there are pictures of it everywhere. So that kind of further solidified its specialness. And also, I had just started the two-week schedule, um, which was particularly insane because I had to be out of town for two or three days. And now I have to, because I had just succeeded on the two-week for the first time when normally it's eight weeks. So And then now for the second time, now you're going to be out of town for three days. What the hell are you going to do? So I'm trying to write songs on the plane. like So in my hotel room, obviously, I got a solidified song choice like now. So I was doing some idea generation sessions in the hotel, and so that picture was there, so like the first couple of lines. So that's where that came from. That's where the song came from. If you don't mind me asking, how do you make a living, like, YouTube videos, ads? 
well, now it's completely Bill Wirtz and Bill Wirtz related things, which is uh, pretty good. It's sort of a combination of everything YouTube, um, music, Spotify, iTunes, Patreon. I'm forgetting something. There's like a conglomerate of five or six different things, and it's, it's, it's enough. Donations, PayPal. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't do what I'm doing if you, if you think you're going to have to make money from it. Like, I mean, it was, if you don't, if you, I mean, if you count from just when the website started, it was still years until there was any money. Like, the, the reason I'm able to completely do exactly what I want to do, exactly what, you can't make money from that. Unless you do it so good and so well for such a long time that you can succeed with it. Then I think, it's kind of a slow play. Like, the whole thing that I'm doing is like a massive slow burn. <laughs> <laughs> might be working. <laughs> I'm not there. I'm not all the way there yet. But. Um, so. That reminds me of like the topic of fame, um, and it makes me wonder a couple things. Like, first, was like fame kind of always a goal of yours, and second, like what have been the re- repercussions of this sort of fame? Mm-hmm. And it also makes me wonder, like, as a person who used the internet. Do you ever like use the internet anonymously, or like kind of wish you had that experience again? Yeah. Well, most of the stuff I do on the internet, obviously, is you know. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, you know, it's one of those things you can't tell people. You shouldn't tell people that that's something you want. It's kind of taboo for you to know until you have it, and then you can, and then whatever. So like, I never, I didn't really tell people that I was doing what I was doing. It's kind of more thrilling for people that I know to text me or to run into me and say, I just, my friend just recommended something to me, but it's you. So it's like, that's, that's fun. Um, it's very awkward to tell people what I'm doing who didn't, you know. So, you know, it's like David Letterman moved out to, when he first moved out to L.A., he told his family he wanted to be a writer because you just can't tell. He, he knew what he wanted to do. He wanted to like be the next Johnny Carson, but you can't. It's taboo to tell people that you want to succeed really crazy, because there's that awkward moment when they're thinking, "Well, you probably won't, but okay," mm-hmm. you know. So it's kind of awkward. So, so it kind of like was always a goal, but you wouldn't yeah. tell people because that's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was, I mean, I I was kind of annoyingly uh, good with music, like from age two. Like I just picked stuff up insanely quickly. And so with that massive head start and it's just everything, I'm kind of like a magnet in terms of musical skill, musical knowledge. I've, it's come really easy to me since I was very young. Mm-hmm. So I get to about age 10 and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, this is this is great. This is going to work out. I'm like this, is, you know. But actually, yeah, it doesn't quite work out. Always. You're going to put in a lot of hard work. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Another question. Can I talk about how um, you had a lot of people when you were kind of spending those 11 months making um, your longer videos mm-hmm. ask you, like, when's the next album coming out? Mm-hmm. Do you feel pressured now that you have grown an audience to, like, keep that audience? And if so, do you find that, how do you find that maybe conflicting with your own persistent vision? And I never wanted to go slow because I'm very aware that most of the things, like I was saying before, like how I just walk down the street and there's like a freaking explosion of infinite types of ideas and infinite types. So I've always known that it's going to be like a race against the clock, just even just for my lifetime. Just to, So I've never been not in a desperate hurry. So having an actual audience that's impatient is, it's really no different. It's really no different than that. I mean, but generally, yeah, there is a feeling that when you have an audience there, it's like you need to you need to catch that. You know, it's kind of like when my Vine channel started going crazy just out of nowhere. That I had to kind of re-strategize to, to make sure I caught that. It's good. That's actually the first big thing to kind of send me to send me sailing, so to speak. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. What's your sort of other entertainment consumption like? like uh, to be honest with you, I've noticed that I watch a lot. Well, you go through phases, you know. You go through, you know, get really into something. I find myself watching a lot of interviews with directors, maybe actors, probably more directors, honestly. You know, there's things like that that come and go. I watched a whole bunch of chess strategy videos a few weeks ago. <laughs> Bob Ross, I watched a lot of Bob Ross for a while. 
Um, yeah, different different things, you know. Different things. I last, last couple of days I've been watching uh, tool assisted speed runs of like Mario games. <laughs> <laughs> that can be a, a thrill if it's a game you're familiar with and you're watching them do crazy glitches in Super Mario World. Holy crap! Like AGTQ. Like, well, they, they inject like code. AGTQ. They figured out how to inject code. Oh, it's just from gameplay. Like you go and you put a whole million shells in a bunch of places and then do a glitch and then it turns down as Pong. I playing Pong. <laughs> and a guy actually did it by hand. A guy actually did a Flappy Bird code. Someone else wrote it, but he made it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. And a guy did it by hand on a console. Cat bling? Yes, I just saw that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's crazy. I'll say it. But I haven't had time to play video games in like a hundred years, so it's kind of embarrassing. Like the, the video games I am familiar with are just decades old by now. I'm curious back to like the you might be interested in collaborating, but you don't know how or like how it's going to happen. Like, what do you think you can get out of collaboration that you haven't done already? Like, um, get things that look and sound a little different, maybe. Because uh-huh. no matter yeah. how much people always say, you know. Are you afraid to do videos of a different style? I'm like, dude, every single time I try to make something that looks different, (laughs) I'm not happy with the fact that anyone thinks that anything I do all looks the same. By the way, all looks the same might just be code word for they just don't like it. Because if they liked it, then maybe that wouldn't be a problem. But no, I try so hard to make things different. And if you do everything yourself, it's hard to escape that sometimes. Mm. So that could be an advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, when you were mentioning the director thing, I couldn't help but be like, I would love to see Phil, like, direct yeah. a film or something. For some reason, yeah, yeah. I go wild when I, when I see, like, interviews with directors and I see directors working. But Because in some ways, they're, they're doing exactly the same thing I'm doing because they're worrying about everything. They're worrying about the final product, how it affects the viewer, moment to moment, visual, audio, everything, especially writer-directors. Um, but but the weird thing is is that they're they're living in this world where their product takes a thousand people to make. So in that sense, it's completely different from anything I've ever done. It'd be cool. It'd be great to do that, but I don't I don't know how <laughs> that would ever happen. But, mm-hmm. yeah. cool. I'm just curious if you've ever uh, if you ever performed live. In terms of my own material, no, I've never I've never done live, and I want to. Mm. And I'm going to, but it's just there's never a good time to put production for everything else on hold because if I go on tour, I'm not making videos or records, or anything. so that's the problem. Yeah, and I, I was also wondering, in general, about control because it seems like if if you do more live stuff, you have less control. Yeah, but that's I've actually had enough experience with that because I'm a musician, so oh, I've right. had quite a bit of experience playing in bands, great bands. And that's really everything I want. I don't want a live show that is pre-recorded, nothing pre-recorded. Mm-hmm. I've been a drummer on so many gigs where there's a click in my ear because you got to play the tracks. It's just a waste of time. It just doesn't feel right. And pre-recorded videos on the thing, I'm, I'm not doing any of that in a live show. It's going to be a band. And magical things happen. And they're, they're, they're not going to, you know, they're not going to be in the same style. Like, the songs are not going to be in the same, like, they're going to be... You know, magical things can happen. You take songs and just do them in a different way. Mm. So, no, yeah, it's going to be a band, and it's it's. I'm not worried about that because I've had enough experiences with bands where where just magical stuff happens. Stuff that can't happen when I unfortunately it can't <laughs> happen when I do things the way I do them. Mm. You can't get just instant chemistry. Five guys sitting down playing and just you know you can't get that. But that is something that I'm very attached to. So that will that will be something that would be. Happening in my show, for sure. Do you listen to a lot of music, or is it mostly playing? I was completely addicted to one particular musician, uh, instrumental musician, for like my teenage years, and that was the only thing I could listen to. And because I was so trapped for so long, I I busted out of that, you know, so hard um, after that. And then I started listening to pop radio, and then I just got obsessed went through all the charts so yeah it's a lot of popular stuff but there's a lot of Paul McCartney post Beatles uh, a lot of Stevie Wonder a lot of there's a lot of stuff a lot of stuff I don't even know the name of I just kind of yeah it was a lot of stuff 
do you collect anything like un- not necessarily related to your work, but just your life? Yeah, I think so. I luckily I've managed to almost merge every hobby that I have onto the website almost over time, which is pretty cool. I don't know. I I do collect clips of good like interview clips like maybe five to ten seconds just kind of from the questions page people sometimes I use anecdotes and references and I just find little clips so I kind of yeah I do collect whenever I see like sound bite of like an interview that really seems mm-hmm. meaningful that reminds me I was like on your website once and I found this picture I think it must have been of your room or your studio and there are all of these inspirational quotes not mine Oh, not yours? Okay. No. Um, I really liked it. No. Um, no, okay. No, this is crazy. I've never really said this, but I was playing, I got a gig playing for a, uh, a church, and they found out that I didn't know I was going to live next, and I didn't really have a job. They said they converted the conference room into a bedroom. They said, live in the church Whoa. for a few months. It's totally cool. And I said, you know, I wish I could say no to that, but I have to say yes. Because I ended up having all the time in the world to record and do stuff, but yeah, that's that room, and it had, it has, yeah. Quotes. I guess one day he just printed out a whole bunch of like Steve Jobs quotes. And, <laughs> and, uh, it's like preachers and entrepreneurs, and just Winston Churchill, Martin Luther King. You know, it's like just famous quotes. <clears throat> it's actually pretty cool. I don't even think I read all. Of them. Every wall has them. So yeah, I didn't do it, but I probably read most of them. Some of them are pretty good. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, maybe um, we'll wrap up if. Um, yeah, that sounds good. Um, yeah, thanks so much for coming. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, it was an honor to have you here. This is free learning training for me because I'm terrible at this. I went on the H3 podcast and I was a basket case. I was blown away by how, because I've had a lot of stage time just as a player. So it blew me away how unequipped I was to, to deal with stage time when I'm talking and speaking. So this is, this is just free, free learning for me. <laughs> That's what I was saying in the basement when I was waiting. I was in the basement waiting. <laughs> I, was, I was like, free learning. It's just free learning. Don't worry. Free learning. <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. So thank, thank you for letting me do that. Thanks. HTML energy. Welcome to HTML Energy.